we called out for people to hit us up um, for the 100th episode. And quite a few people did, and we didn't get a chance to get through them all. And one of them that we didn't get through was Mark, who doesn't have a last name <laughs> legally for this story. Hey, Scott and Josh. I heard you guys are looking for stories. So seeing as you played a part in me going to Europe for five months, I uh, figured I should tell one from that. I was in Spain at the time with the guys traveling with Robbie and I had a couple of mates who were telling us to go to Morocco. So we're in Malaga and the ferry tickets cost like 20 euros. So uh, we decided to go and we get to Tangermed, which is like the port there. We catch a bus to Chef Shaun. And Chef Shaun, for anyone who doesn't know, is like this uh, the city that's just painted blue. And it's, it's pretty, like you would have seen it in photos and um, people go because there's a lot of markets and and it's a bit of a novelty, everything being blue. But Rob and I went because we heard that it was the biggest exporter of hash, so like 60% to Europe. I like where this is going. We got to Tangermed, we caught a bus to Chef Shaun, and then we got to the this place called Medina in Chef Shaun. And Medina is like the old town, so we got there, and this guy's waiting outside the Medina. He's like, oh, hey, do you, do you guys know where you're going? And we're like, nah. Can you, can you show us the hostel? And he's like, yeah, no worries. So while we're walking to, to this hostel, he offers to buy and sell us some hash. So we, we bought some off him. It was like $10. Uh, we get to the hostel. He's like, oh, uh, do you guys have any money for me? And I was like, nah, man, like we just paid you. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. But for anyone who does go to Morocco, don't don't accept people's help in leading you places. Me and Robbie almost got into a fight with a dude when he tried to charge us 50 bucks in Marrakesh uh, for like, leading us somewhere for two minutes and so we we went out for dinner that night and there was another guy waiting outside the medina this time and he's like hey i can take you to my weed farm i was like oh it's getting dark man like maybe tomorrow and robbie got his number woke up next morning went went out again and the same guy standing outside the medina he's, he's been messaging robbie the whole night and he's like oh hey like a guy i really want you guys to come be my family like here's some videos of the farm so we see him and he sees us he's like oh hey if you guys manage to mind you, guys want to come? And we're like, yeah, okay, yeah, sweet. But like, we, we do have to be back for our bus at three o'clock. <laughs> and he's like, okay, no, no worries. And he leads us up the street. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that guy asked for money yesterday for, for leading us somewhere. He's probably going to ask for money too. So I was like, how much do you want? And he's like, how much are you willing to give me? I was like, oh, 50 dirham. And 50 dirham is like five bucks. And I was like, okay, cool. And he leads us this like beat up van. And there's this two, these two Moroccan dudes sitting in the van. And they didn't say anything to us. They just kind of jabber away in Arabic to this guy. And to be dry for about 20 minutes. <laughs> this is this, amazing. This because is the I, this is taken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. Are you an idiot? Uh, so we, we're driving up the mountain around this corner. And there's just like below us, just like field of weed. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It was just like a farm, but just, just bud there. So we get out and he's showing us around. He's like, oh, come I'm look at this, like smell this, like this is this variety. It's it's like more of a sativa, and then you have like this, and so we wander around for a little bit. He like introduces us to his family, and then he's like, "Do you want to come see how the hash is made?" So he takes us into the shed, and in the shed, there's him, his mate, and there's this other dude who's just like blazed out of his mind, and he's just like sitting in the corner, just comatose. And they're like, "Oh, like you can make some hash with us." I was like, "Okay, cool." So then they put like a bunch of the flour in a bag, and then stretch it across a drum, and then they beat. The out of it with two wooden sticks and so we're, we're laughing we're having amazing. fun and then i was like okay well we're gonna go soon so here's your money i pulled out 100 durham i was like here you go and they're like what is this like this is this is outrageous i was like what do you mean like this is agreed upon price and they're like no i said 50 euros each and i was like all right you didn't say shit. like and then i started getting, getting kind of angry because so like and then they got angry and then the price went up to like 100 euros and then like 150 euros each <laughs> And then one of them gets up and, like, punches the wall. This is not good. We might have to find our way out of here. But then I was like, shit, we can't even do that because they probably have guns. Like, we, we were in North Africa. These guys look pretty sketchy. They tell me to shut up because I'm getting too argumentative. And they're like, oh, we can take you to the ATM and get money out that way. And I was like, no way. And I, I give them another 10 euros for my wall and that's all I had. And at this point, they're kind of angry, but they're like, oh, like, this is unacceptable, but, like, you know, we'll take your... 35 euro equivalent and they gave us a bit of hash on top of that <laughs> the amount of hash that they gave us was probably like the amount that we could buy in the street so 
they didn't actually scam us at, at the end of the day. We, we just kind of feared for our lives. <laughs> anyway, so we, we navigated our way out of there and they, they got us in this van again, except like this time we're just riding with these three Moroccan dudes and they just seemed very pissed off. And they drop us in the middle of nowhere, right? Just outside Chef Shawin. And they mentioned them paying off police previously. So I was kind of like, oh, maybe they've dropped us here and they called the cops and we have all this hash on us and that's why they gave it to, to us. And now we're going to get caught and we're going to go to a Moroccan prison cell. And my parents aren't going to be able to find me. But it didn't happen. And they didn't follow us to the ATM. So that was good. Um, and we got back to our hostel, grabbed our bags, like sprinted to the bus. And, and once we are on the bus, we were able to breathe easy. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's been a pretty, pretty terrifying experience. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thanks, guys. Um, love the podcast. Keep doing it. What a king. <laughs> that rules so much. Yeah, so Mark hit us off a while ago. He's like, um, I think he just split up with his girlfriend or something. He was like, should I take a gap year or should I? People are saying I should just get to uni. Just get to uni. And we were like, dude, go traveling. <laughs> Bounce. And then he nearly fucking died in Morocco, so that could have been some <laughs> terrible advice. We should have probably told him not to get into vans with weird fucking sketchy Moroccans. In fairness, they always make for the best stories. Very true, and he does have a ripper, and he's still alive with all of his appendages. But I watch that Kirk Kaz sometimes on YouTube. He's like that fucking South African dude that goes around to like sometimes dodgy places and um, – just kind of gets himself. Is that into the bald trouble. guy? No, that's the bald and bankrupt guy. Yeah, that guy rules. Well, there's a, there's like a young South African kind of handsome dude that does the same thing, and he's always with some new exotic um, female, which uh, is quite interesting to see. But he um he went to Morocco as well and Marrakesh, and it was like that. Just scammy cunts everywhere trying to rip him off. He's like, it fuck is, this. It's everywhere, man. Like, I mean, it is in Europe. Yeah. I can't even imagine what it's like in North Africa. Um, that's crazy though. <laughs> Dude, I tell you what, if you would have ended up in uh, getting hustled by the police and spending a bit of time in Moroccan jail, <clears throat> hell of a way to start a podcast. Fucking <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come back and start one. That rules though, because you do find yourself in those situations sometimes where you're like, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine. Especially when you're younger, you're like, oh, yeah, now that sounds like a bit of an adventure. And then it's the moment when people start speaking Arabic or something and you realize you're like, oh, we might be fucked here. I'll tell a story um, on the Patreon, actually, after this. So if anyone's interested in a similar fucking predicament from myself in Barcelona, yes, feel free to... Uh, Is this with me? No. Ah. No. With my other partner in crime. I remember when we were in Barcelona, they were like, we, we checked into the hostel, it was me and Josh, many years ago. And um, the people at the hostel were like, no matter what, just don't buy drugs off people on the street. <laughs> and we were just like walking back from the hotel drunk ones. And we just harassed this dude into going and buying his hash. We're like, do you have hash? She's like, no, no, I don't sell drugs. I'm like, fucking go and find it some. He's like, cerveza? No, no hash. No. Ashish, ashish. And then uh, he did. And then we realized we had no idea how to smoke hash. Not a fucking clue. So we were in the... Um, we're in, in hostels. Everyone that's been in a hostel will know. Like, I can still vividly picture the scene that you're about to describe. <laughs> yeah, well. we're, in this, we're in the kitchen and we're trying to get a, a fucking no, a, a fork so we can try and break this hash down. Two knives we wanted. <laughs> that's right. So we could heat it off and somehow and like, the dude's just chase the there, dragon. Folding towels, <laughs> just looking at us. It's like three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> folding tea towels, just staring at us. We're like, you don't need to be folding tea towels, bro. He knew exactly what we were up to as well. And that's we just suffice to say we knives. never got high. <laughs> Club are good. Good. Good.